So in this recording, we will continue uh, to explore the Amazon Bedrock Agent features. And uh, today we will see how to create a retrieval agent using AWS Bedrock Agent. So for that, like to create a retrieval agent, first I need to create the knowledge base from which the agent need to retrieve the knowledge. So to create the knowledge base, first of all, I the, the knowledge documents from which the, uh, or based on which the knowledge base will be created, th those documents first I will have to upload to S3, which I already did. Let me go to S3 and um, show you the document that I have uploaded. So I've created a bucket called Bedrock Agent. 01 and in that i uploaded this uh, document called loan estimate.pdf and uh, the pdf is is a loan estimate uh, uh, closure document uh, sample document where it has the loan amount and the interest rate now if i uh, so this is what i have uploaded in s3 now if I go to Bedrock and uh, if I want to create the knowledge base now, I click on knowledge base. I will click on create knowledge base. I'll give a name to the knowledge base. Let's say I give it Bedrock. Um, I'll just uh, example KB knowledge base. Uh, this is a this is an example of creating a knowledge base right this is a description of the knowledge base and then um, I'll let it create the service role let me click on next I so I can if I want, I can change the data source name, but I'll just keep this, whatever has been suggested here. And now I will choose the S3 location where I have uploaded the PDF document. So this is the PDF document. I can do additional advanced settings where I can um, use a default KMS key or customize the encryption setting. The other important thing is a chunking strategy. So I saw that there are three chunking strategies that AWS is, uh, agents is providing right now. One is a default chunking. So the by default, the knowledge base automatically splits your source data into chunks containing at most 300 tokens. If a document contains less than 300 tokens, then it is not split any further. So default chunking is one. I There is a... Uh, fixed chunking also. So when I, if I choose fixed chunking, I can choose uh, uh, what will be the maximum number of tokens per chunk and what percentage of that, what percentage of overlap I want, right? Now, what overlap means is, let's say I have a PDF um, and uh, if, if I split the PDF into two chunks, um, let's say the first chunk has uh, 300 tokens uh, second chunk, 300 tokens, but if I want to overlap or, or include some of the tokens from the previous chunk to the new chunk, I can do that through the overlap percentage. Usually you do it um, to, like if the context uh, overflows from previous chunk into the next chunk, you do a overlap chunking, right? So that is uh, the overlap percentage, right? Uh, so fixed chunking, fixed size chunk chunking is uh, another technique. And no chunking is where you um, already have uh, uh, split the document into chunks and um, you don't want uh, AWS or the uh, bedrock to do any chunking. Uh, it will directly take the chunks that you have uh, uploaded in S3. Now, what I would say, like, these three may not be sufficient for uh, more advanced, complex uh, 
document Q and A because uh, if I have very complex PDFs with uh, tables and charts, right? I might need um, other chunking strategies like uh, layout chunking or uh, um, let's say if I uh, want to convert the table into uh, markdown format, I, I will not be able to use default chunking and fixed size chunking. In th those cases, I might have to do, uh, uh, choose a third one like no chunking where I chunk the documents the way I do using my chunking strategy and then um, let the knowledge base use that already chunked document, right? So that is where the no chunking can be used, right? So for now, um, let me choose a default chunking and let me proceed. So right now only one embedding model is available, which is a Titan embedding models. Um, in future, uh, it would be good if uh, AWS uh, also uh, gives um, the option to choose other embedding models like the Cohere embedding, the multilingual embedding, right, or um, uh, some other embeddings uh, like that would uh, help to um, evaluate between different embedding models. But right now, um, this is the only option. I can use uh, only the Titan embedding. Now to create the vector database, there are two options, right? Either I can uh, create a vector store, which will, um, this will like, uh, where, where I am not uh, uh, deploying or managing the vector store my, uh, myself. This is a um, uh, software as a uh, service, as a SaaS uh, service, right? Where uh, Amazon, um, or AWS will create the vector store as a uh, serverless service for me, which is uh, Amazon Open Search. Right? It will create an Open Search serverless vector uh, store and will uh, embed the chunks and load the chunks into uh, this Open Search serverless uh, vector store. So this is uh, zero maintenance, very easy, right? The other option is if I have my own vector store created, then I have three options. I can either use the vector engine for um, Amazon, like if I have a serverless open search, I can use it, or I can use uh, Pinecone or Redis Enterprise Cloud. These are the three options. If I want to use my own vector store, my own deploy, uh, the vector store, if I want to deploy it myself, right? But I think uh, this uh, serverless uh, software as a service like um, uh, vector store that that probably that is more um, uh, easier and, and faster uh, approach to create the vector store. So I'll choose this and I'll say next, and I'll review the information and then create the knowledge base. So it takes uh, some time to create the knowledge base. So it is preparing the vector. Vector, vector database in Amazon Open Search serverless uh, service. And um, as it says, this process may take uh, several minutes to complete. Um, but uh, I think it, it's less than a minute. Um, it will it will complete because we have a very small uh, PDF document. Uh, it's preparing the vector database right now. So once that uh, knowledge uh, uh, base is created, so it is, oh, okay, so vector database is ready now. Um, okay, so maybe it is uh, at the last stage because this is still uh, uh, blocking. We'll wait for this and, um, oh, okay, now it has been created. So if I want, I can directly um, select a model from here and test it out. It, like I can select a model. And the model that is available right now is only the anthropic model, the cloud model. So I can um, choose it, uh, choose a model from here and then 
um, test out this knowledge base from here or I can uh, go to the agents as well. Now I can create a retrieval agent. So I'll say create agent. I'll say bedrock retrieval agent. And um, I'll give a description. This is my bedrock retrieval agent. Select whether the agent can prompt additional information from the user when it does not have enough information to respond to an utterance. I'll mark it yes. And um, well, um, I give a, a question. We'll see how, how it uh, behaves. Um, I'll create and use a new service role. I'll not use an existing service role. Um, session timeout, I'll keep it to 30 minutes, which is good enough. Next. And as I said, like we only have access, uh, only have uh, option to use Anthropic. Uh, and Anthropic, I'll use the V2 model. And here I need to give the system prompt, the instructions to the agent. So I'll say you are a helpful chat assistant. You answer questions based on the provided PDF document, right? Let me go to, now I'm gonna click on next. Um, so since I'm using a retrieval agent, I will um, skip this. This is uh, required when you uh, want to create a uh, function calling um, agent. So I will not do anything with this. Now, when I come to the knowledge base, now, uh, since I'm creating the retrieval agent, I will uh, specify the knowledge base that I have created just before coming to agent, right? Uh, from this uh, option, right? This is a knowledge base I have created. Now here again, um, it is saying knowledge base instructions for agent. And I'm not very sure why we need this, but this is a, mandatory field where it is saying specify instructions based on the design and type of information of the knowledge base. This will impact how the knowledge base interacts with the agent. Um, I'm uh, My understanding was like, if I have already uh, given the system prompt to the agent, uh, why would I still need to give, a, give instructions here? But since it is mandatory, I, um, I'll go ahead and say that this is, uh, this knowledge base is a PDF documentary. And uh, I'll say next. I'll just review once and create the agent. So the agent will be created soon and then we'll be ready to uh, test the agent out. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is created now. Now, um, let us fire some questions and the questions should be, will be from uh, this document here from the loan document. So I'll say, what is my loan amount, right? What is my loan amount, right? So let's see what it answers. So this is what I have seen. Um, first time I, I get this, but when I try twice or thrice, it does give me the answer. So let me ask again, what is my loan amount? Let's see. I might have missed one step which is to sync the knowledge base. Let's see. Loading the response. Okay, no, so it is sync. But see what had happened is it is saying, what is your name? And this is because if you remember when I created the agent, I uh, 
ticked an option saying that that the language model can ask a follow up question if it needs more information so it says what is my what is your name so in the in the knowledge base the name is sample loan the applicant name is sample loan right so we'll say okay sample loan right so now it will answer correctly but yeah so the thing that i've seen that uh, sometimes i get this sorry i don't have enough information to answer that but when i try again it provides answer the other thing um, that where i see a gap right now and probably ws will fill it up soon is a programmatic access to this uh, see it says uh, yeah the programmatic access to the agent which is not there i apologize i could not find information about a loan amount it gave the answer sometimes back but now it is not able to i don't know why um if i look at the stress right so it's a based on the conversation it looks like the agent called the ask user function to ask the user for their name the user responded sample loan which appears to be answer providing their name is a direct response to the question asked by the ask user which was the last function called i'll categorize it category e i don't know what this category e means um but it is uh, the stress is uh, not 100% helpful here but what we'll do is we'll uh, ask the question again and see if this time it answers what is my loan amount probably it will ask my name again and this time I think there is a space between sample loan. I will, if it asks my loan again, uh, is uh, my name again? I'll probably give the space and see if it answers uh, correctly. Yes. So I'll say sample loan. But looks like this this feature um, is still maturing, and uh, I think over a period of time it will get better. But right now, it's not hundred percent accurate. There are gaps. Like I do not have uh, a programmatic access to those agents. See, it still says I apologize. I could not find information about the loan amount for sample loan. Um, so let's see. Let me see what is the loan amount mentioned. What is the loan amount for? Let me copy the name right now instead of typing it. Let's see if it is able to find that out. Okay. So, well, exactly like how it is there in the document. Let me see. If it should not be like this, right? Uh, I have to give the exact thing, right? Then the then the purpose for having a language model like we defeat that purpose it's it's not able to this may be because i have not synced the information let me check that so this was the yeah let me sync it maybe this is the reason um i forgot to sync it yep so now the syncing has happened and now if I go back, let's see what is my loan amount. But even with syncing, I have seen um, sometimes, like as I said, like I have to retry and then, then it gives me the correct answer. But uh, now let's see. Now that have I synced the knowledge base, it should now be able to, oops, still it is not able to. Okay, let me start from the beginning. What is my loan amount? Okay. 
gave me answer in my previous test. So I am hoping after I try for some times, it will probably work. Still loading response. Yep. See, now it did not even ask me what is my name. It just gave loan amount is 300K, which is actually correct. 300K. Now, let me say what is the interest. Great. So, one thing you'll see that it has also given a citation. Um, if I hover on it, uh, it gives a PDF, but uh, since it is, I think, the loading response, it is not giving me the um, text when I hover it. So once it uh, answers, I'll hover it again, and then you can see the citation as well. Yeah, 2.99%. 2.99% is correct. But this time, you see, there is no citation. Here, I was able to get the citation. And then citation also, I see sometimes it is giving me the entire document. Sometimes when I hover, it gives me uh, the exact uh, um, text where this answer is there. So here also I see then there is some inconsistency. Uh, if I do a show trace, let's see. So the trace looks like this. Based on reviewing the conversation history, this question seems to be a follow-up to the previous question about the loan amount. User is now asking what the interest rate for the loan. This question can likely be answered by searching the provided PDF knowledge again. So it says using get uh, AMZ knowledge. Probably this is a Lambda function that uh, AWS creates underneath when we create the agent. Agent has access to that function and can use it to try to find the interest rate information in the PDF and provide it to the user. Therefore, this input falls into category D. Now, I don't know what category D is. Earlier, we saw it was category E. So category D, questions that can be answered by the agent using the provided functions and conversation context. So it looks like this category uh, has some meaning. Um, so earlier, we saw category E. Then I saw category D. I also was trying to give it some jailbreak prompts. And then the category was different. For example, if I say, how do I break into a bank? So I tried multiple times to uh, do jailbreaking prompts. It is doing pretty good. It is not giving me answer, but uh, uh, the category is different. So if I say show trace, now I see that the category, okay, now it does not give me the category. The input is asking how to break into bank, which is malicious and harmful fictional scenario. Even though it's fictional, I should categorize it as harmful, right? So. <clears throat> These are some of the things that uh, I have tried out today about uh, um, bedrock agents. Today we saw the retrieval agent. My next recording will be on functional agent and I'll keep on uh, tracking the improvements in this agent. After some time, so I'll, I'll try again and see uh, over a period of time if uh, it has matured. So that's all for today. Thank you.